Hey folks, Clyde Lindsay here at Leechburg Lights. Hey, I've got a, a new sequencing video, something to help you along with uh, creating some really cool effects that you might not have known how to do. Now, I've already done a video on using the morph effect, and uh, I, I, let me just set this up by saying um, the morph effect is probably my favorite effect, um, but using the layer setting box I think that's the second most useful thing for me and the way I sequence and the way I can uh, sense the music in the, in, the, in the song how I want it to display but there's other tools that you have at your disposal that can create things that you just cannot do any other way now uh, you can see here this is a morph there's nothing fancy about this morph but what I was trying to do was I wanted to start at the bottom right of the of the uh, morph and go up to the top left okay and in doing this is not as easy as you think so I thought well I'll just go over here to the transformations in the layer setting and I'll rotate it I mean if I if I just put a new one on let me put a new one on here let me do another morph and let me just do a uh, full sweep up nope that's a single sweep full sweep up and so here we have a full sweep up obviously nothing fancy there but I wanted to go from the bottom right corner to the top can there's no 45 degree angle available here in the transformation setting so if I do 90 degrees look what happens to it it transforms by going from left to right and then we can obviously rotate it 180 degrees it goes from top to bottom or we can flip vertical which is pretty much the same thing or we can have nothing which is opposite um, so there's options but not the option that I really really wanted to uh, happen so what I did was I found a way to make it work and as you can see here I'm going from like the top right of the mega tree and going fading across and down but you'll notice that the actual effect that I'm using is not is not a morph it is actually a fade yeah, that's right. Um, I'm using the exact same colors and I have that fade going across of them. Now, I want you to notice that I'm not doing anything with the buff with the uh, with the settings, the buffer tab and the settings, or I'm not using anything with the roto zoom. But this did take a little bit for me to understand how to work it. But let me go through the process. And maybe this can be just another supplemental video that you guys can use to help you create some really cool effects. So before I explain how to do this, I'm just going to walk through these. Now, if you use the layer blending screen, you're going to see a lot of normal stuff, something that you're, you're very familiar with. The layer blending screen used to have only a transition in and a transition out time and that was like for fade so if you wanted to fade up into a, a color and then fade down then this is what you did you changed this here in the fade box so um, so this became pretty standard with doing any kind of ramp so let's see if here if I did I did uh, on just the on effect and it has this setting of fade fade in for one second and fade out for one second so you can see it pulsing on and pulsing off without having to do the up the on and the down okay so there's three separate effects all recreated with one effect you can spread that out over the same time and get the exact same effect versus the candy canes which are let's see here they're fade up over that period of time fade down over that period of time and if you really want to get technical I had this at one second fade in a one second fade out and that should do it right there this now is the equivalent of this so I've just recreated this it's just a different way now this is where it gets really cool okay so you understand that there is this fade option but have you guys been playing with any of these any of these options down below whatsoever and this is where we need to expand our horizons so what I did was I've set up a little test on each one of these settings and I'll show you some of the neat things that you can do with them now this is what's called a wipe and what it's doing is it's one for one it's going it's wiping in a direction and it's using this adjustment in the transition in and the transition out see it's both set to 50 now notice that on the transition in it's set to 50 on the transition out let's say we set it at zero what happens at the end it 
goes down. Instead of down and then back up, it goes down and then finishes by going down. What if you do it the other way? Down and then goes down again. So we have kind of a repeat, but what happens whenever you're at 45 or uh, 25? So now we were going down and then down. Now we're going down and to the right. So that gives it a different appeal. Now, even more than that, let's just take it back to normal, which you saw at the beginning. And let's go over here to the layer setting box. This is the default setting. What if we change per the preview? Does it do any changes? And in some cases, it doesn't. But in other cases, there are things where it does it by single line. It's doing all of the single lines. And it's actually just doing a fade like normal. Let's change it yet again, horizontal per model. So now we have something totally different. This is like the curtain effect, uh, where it starts where the end of the matrix it ends and uh, then carries over to the left side. And then obviously if you have horizontal, there's vertical per preview, which is going to look uh, as it does there. Horizontal per model and slash strand. And that gives a little bit more of an interesting effect, uh, kind of like a garland or a garland fill. So, uh, and, and then let's not forget that you can also, at the same time, you can rotate this in a different way and get different results. Flip vertically gives it a different appeal. I mean, there's just absolutely a hundred different ways to do this. So, so let's go on and let's move on to this one here. This is the clock transformation so it doesn't look like it's doing anything as a default but let's set it to per preview and now it looks like a clock dialing in and then dialing out now once again whenever it's doing things the same way at the beginning and then returning back to its original that means our sliders are activated we can go ahead and adjust those see what happens now it, it's kind of a little different let's go the whole way and so it starts down here and goes around and then it comes backwards from this 12 o'clock position and if you do it over here let's say where does it end and where does it start so is that something that you can use within your sequence so remember there's two sliders here you've got your transition in and your transition out so you could start over here at 29 and let's go over here to 60 on this one and see what it does so it's kind of something similar, but it just moved the starting point. And that's what you're going to start finding. Remember, you can go ahead and change these per, per single line, which some things don't look interesting, but unless you go through and understand the logic that x slice is multiplying out and creating these effects, and it's actually using you know, uh, some sort of logarithm or, or some sort of... of uh, uh, some some actual equation to calculate this for you and it's all based on the buffer setting and the layers blending so let's move on we've got uh, this is what's called the clock obviously uh, let's go back up there this is called from middle it almost sounds like it's something like uh, like the curtain effect or uh, the single strand if we go per preview look at that it does this really neat kind of kind of a curtain you can vertical vertical per model that's another curtain type effect overlay over the center and some of them like I said they repeat and if we do scaled it's kind of like a curtain effect from one end to the other and bouncing back so now let's move on to this which is our square explode now in the default screen over here we see that it just does that wipe fade but let's change it per preview at the beginning and then look what happens to it so this is only on the transition uh, on the whole on the whole effect itself uh, per preview if you go to horizontal line it brings it up in a little different way vertical per model horizontal per model and then the same thing there's there's a number that that look as if they repeat themselves so f moving on along we have the circle explode which is exactly like the square explode if you change to like the per the per preview it goes in as a circle comes out as a circle and you notice the sliders are not available for the square the circle explode explode and the square explode so um, there's some options that just can't be uh, you know utilized 
from here, if we go into this one, which this one's called the blinds, you can see just in the default settings, it looks like a pair of Venetian blinds. And if you don't like it that way, let's rotate it 90 degrees. And that kind of gives you an interesting uh, effect that you just never could do any other way that was simple. So, and, and our sliders are available again. So now you can see, you can see how whenever you're transitioning in, it transitions in this way, but then we can change it to transition out this way. Okay, moving right along, we've got our blend mode. And this is actually pretty neat. It's kind of like squares filling in, and like I, I can see using this in a significant number of sequences for different um, um, fast, bouncy areas of the song to uh, represent some cool stuff. So uh, that's the blend mode. You can, uh, uh, you can also go in and change it. It kind of like a full twinkle on and then to f untwinkle off, so, so to speak. So there's, this is in a block form. So there's a couple options there. And then next we have the slide checks. So that's kind of like, uh, it's kind of just like the uh, Venetian blinds there where they go off and come back on. And uh, and again, you can go over here and play single line. It looks a little different. Horizontal per strand looks a little different. Centered looks a little different. And then finally, we have our last option, which is slide bars. So if you're looking at this, uh, and obviously you know play with this a little bit. That's an interesting effect right there. You know, let's start on one side, cross over to the other, make a couple skips in the middle. And, uh, you know, you've got yourself a very interesting effect by doing very little work. Now, once again, if you change some of these sliders around, see what you can do with that. And, you, you know, you're going to get some kind of neat effect that could never be created in any other way. Once again, I started with wanting to be able to do this from the bottom left to the top right or from the top right to the bottom left and now I'm able to do this and not have to worry about the morph or having to use this effects assist or trying to get the layer setting box to do the things the want that I want it to do so um, I wanted to I wanted to keep this real brief it's uh, looking like a little longer than I wanted to but this definitely is an interesting tidbit of using the layer blending mode along with your layer setting box where you can really really do some pretty nifty stuff pretty quickly pretty easily so guys thank you for listening thanks for watching I appreciate you uh, taking the time and uh, let me know how things are going go ahead leave your comments below let me know what else you want to see as far as videos go because I am recording a lot now uh, I do have a little bit of time in between sequencing for people and and uh, and getting my display ready for 2016's uh, Christmas season so uh, thanks for watching we'll see you soon and take care guys